Hello, I'm Roger Pressman. Over the last 30 years, I've spent time as a software engineer, a manager, a professor, a consultant, and an author, all focused on software engineering approaches. My primary focus has been on the software process, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video module. When you work to build a product or system, it's important to go through a series of predictable steps, a roadmap that helps you create a timely, high-quality result. The roadmap that you follow is called a software process. A software process is important because it provides stability, control, and organization to an activity that can, if left uncontrolled, become quite chaotic. However, a modern software engineering approach must also be agile. It must demand only those activities, controls, and work products that are appropriate for the project team and the project that is to be produced. At a detailed level, the process that you adopt depends on the software that you're building. One process might be appropriate for creating software for an aircraft avionics system, while an entirely different process would be indicated for the creation of a website. In this video module, we'll explore the software process in some detail. Let's begin by identifying just what a software process really is. A software process has three fundamental elements that each contribute to the roadmap that I just discussed. The first is a framework, which is chosen by software engineers as they build computer software. The framework helps to establish a consistent and disciplined approach to the development of computer software. The second element is an adaptable workflow. This defines the work to be performed as software is conceived and built. In some cases, the workflow is linear, but in others, it might be iterative or parallel. The last element is a model. This emphasizes agility, but at the same time, it impresses a disciplined approach to the process itself. Now, everyone wants to develop software as quickly as possible, and to do so with a minimum of wasted effort. No one wants to produce work products that are unnecessary. An agile approach ensures that little time is wasted and that effort remains focused on the product at hand. Now, when a software team tries to implement a process, it has a set of overriding objectives that it tries to achieve. The first is to establish a consistent framework for building software. But why stress consistency? Some practitioners believe that everyone should do their own thing. You might even be one of them. But we strive for consistency to ensure that all members of the team are on the same page. That communication among members of the team is appropriate, and the work tasks are therefore understood by all. The second overriding objective is to define a workflow that identifies the appropriate work products and quality assurance points. A work product might be a model, a document, a diagram, or a completed checklist of any information produced by a member of the software team. Quality assurance points are any defined activity that assesses a work product against a set of predefined quality criteria. The third objective is to provide a software team with guidance. That's what the process really does. But to provide a team with guidance without stifling their ability to adapt to the problem that they must solve. It also helps the team leader to plan the project, establish a realistic schedule, and track pr progress as the software engineering work proceeds. Now, it's very important, once we've defined our objectives, to understand just what the process is, and also, in a moment, what the process is not. The first question that always arises is, is process synonymous with software engineering? The answer is yes and no. A software process defines the approach that's taken 
as software is engineered. But software engineering also encompasses methods and tools, technologies that populate the process. Some software developers think a process is ponderous and unnecessary, that it stifles creativity and becomes a roadblock to success. Exactly the opposite is true. The process is a framework for completing software engineering work. Without it, your chances of success are much reduced. Now, I promise that we talk about what a process is not. A process is not a rigid protocol for every software project. You don't just open a three-ring binder and follow it step by step. It's not a dictate that leads to lots of unnecessary documentation. The goal of software engineering is not documentation. It's high-quality software. The process is not a set of rules that must be blindly followed. Rather, it's a framework that must be continually adapted. It's not an unreasonable constraint on the software team. The team decides what it will and what it will not do, and the process guides them in those decisions. And finally, the process is not dogma that's followed religiously and gets in the way of agility and creativity. Rather, it's a framework that can enhance agility and creativity. Now, it's very important to understand that we must adapt any process in order to make it effective. As a team applies the software process, it adapts each of these quality elements. Number one, the overall flow of activities, actions, and tasks, and the interdependencies among them. Also, the degree to which the actions and tasks are defined within each framework activity. The degree to which work products are identified and required as software engineering work proceeds. The manner in which quality assurance activities are applied and the criteria used to assess software quality. The manner in which project tracking and control activities are applied. All of these things must be adapted. But we also must adapt the overall degree of detail and rigor with which the process is described. Some projects demand significant detail and rigor, while others might be somewhat less formal. The degree to which the customer and other stakeholders are involved with the project is also adapted on a project-by-project -project basis, as is the level of autonomy given to a specific software team. Finally, the degree to which team organizations and roles are described is something that we also adapt. Now, it turns out that the adaptation that occurs occurs within a hierarchy of key work elements that are part of the software process. At the top of the hierarchy is the process itself, which is composed of a number of activities, sometimes referred to as framework activities. These activities are major workflow elements that are always performed for every project. The activities themselves are composed of actions. Actions are important management and technical events that perform a key software engineering function. Finally, each of the actions is composed of a set of software engineering work tasks, which are performed by practitioners and achieve some small part of the overall project flow. Now, the activities themselves come in two different flavors, as it were. We have, of course, a set of framework activities, which identify the process as a whole. These framework activities may be implemented sequentially, they may be in implemented iteratively, but they are major elements of project workflow that are always performed for every project. But we also have something called umbrella activities. The umbrella activities are major project elements that are performed throughout the project workflow 
and act as an umbrella covering the entire project. We'll take a look at them in a few moments. First, however, the generic activities. We define five major generic activities, framework activities, for software engineering. The first, which I hope should be obvious, is communication. You must communicate and collaborate with the customer and other stakeholders to understand their objectives for the project and, very importantly, to gather requirements. The next framework activity is planning. You must establish a map called a software project plan that defines the software engineering work to be done. The next framework activity is modeling. You should create models to better understand software requirements and the design that will achieve those requirements. It's important to note that there are many different modeling approaches, but the software engineering community has focused in recent years on UML, the Unified Modeling Language, which provides a rich and robust array of modeling techniques that allow a software engineering team to model both requirements and design. As we move forward in framework activities, we come to construction. You must, of course, generate code. And you must test and uncover errors in that code. These are both non-trivial actions within the framework activity that we call construction. And finally, we come to an activity called deployment. You must deliver the software as a complete entity or as a partially completed increment to the customer. You must receive feedback from the customer and act to make modifications as a consequence of that feedback. The umbrella activities that I mentioned a few moments ago cover the entire software process. We begin, of course, with software project tracking and control. This assesses progress against the project plan and takes necessary action to maintain schedules. Managers and customers always ask, where are we? Software project tracking and control tries to answer that question. Another very important umbrella activity is risk management which assesses risks that may affect the outcome of the project or the quality of the product. It's very important to perform contingency planning, and risk management provides us with a mechanism for doing so. Software quality assurance is a pivotal umbrella activity that defines and conducts the activities required to ensure software quality. Software quality assurance is so important that we've dedicated an entire video module to the subject. Technical reviews are actually part of software quality assurance, but they're listed separately because they have such a fundamental impact on the quality of the end product. Technical reviews assess work products in an effort to uncover and remove errors before they're propagated to the next activity.